Annyeonghaseyo yorobun, Jessica Mnida. Hello everyone, I'm Jessica. Alright, today I'm going to talk to you guys about basic Korean sentence structure or word order. So if you just started learning Korean and you're not really sure where to start, this is a great place. Today I'm going to let you guys know about the word order and where certain words go like verbs and nouns a little bit about conjugating verbs, and a little bit about subject markers and object markers. So hopefully after watching this video, you'll feel a little bit more confident with how Korean sentences are made up. And then you can start learning your own vocabulary to start plugging in to the sentence structure. All right, let's jump in. So in English, we use a subject, verb, object, word order. So that means we say I, that's a subject, love, that's a verb, and you, that's the object, subject, verb, object. But Korean, they use a subject, object, verb, word order. So that means the verbs will always go at the end. No matter what, every time, verbs go at the end. <laughs> so if you can remember that, then just remember to put everything else in front of the verb. All right, so if, in Korean, you basically say I, you, love, because we have to have that verb at the end. Love is a verb, so it needs to go at the end of the sentence in Korean. All right, so let's take a look at an actual Korean sentence that shows that word order. Okay, so the sentence we have here is 저는 사과를 먹다. That means I eat apples. But we're trying to show the Korean word order, so it's really I, apples, eat. Okay, so let's break that sentence down. So we have cho, that means me or I. We have sagwa, which means apple, and mokta, which means to eat. All right, so let's break that down. So mokta is our verb because we have subject, object, verb, word order. So mokta is our verb. Every single Korean verb ends with da when it's in its basic form. That means like to eat, mokta, to eat. We're not saying eating, I want to eat, I ate. We're not conjugating the verb, it's just in its basic form. So it has da at the end of it. All right, now you might be thinking, Jessica, you said cho means me, so why does it say chonen? Well, remember when I said that the Korean word order is subject, object, verb? Well, we have little markers that let us know what the subject is and something that let us, lets us know what the object is. So we add nun to our subject. So cho is the thing that's doing the verb, that's the subject. So we add nun to it. So cho nun, cho nun, that's our subject. And we did the same thing to sagwa. So sagwa means apple. We add ru to the end of it, which is our object marker. It lets us know the thing that the verb is acting on. So let's break this down piece by piece. Cho, me. Nin, subject marker. Sagwa, apple. Ru, object marker. Mokta, to eat in its basic form, not conjugated. Just a quick note about un and nun. We add nun to words that end with a vowel, and we add un to words that end with a consonant. So cha ends with a vowel, so that's why we're adding nun. Same with u and ru. Things that end with a vowel, we add ru, and things that end with a consonant, we add u. That's just for ease of pronunciation. So now you know the basic Korean sentence structure. Subject, object, verb, and we use nun to mark our subjects, we use de to mark our objects, and all Korean verbs end with da. All right, so what do we do if you wanna conjugate that verb a little bit? What do we do if you wanna say, I am eating or I want to eat, what can we do? Well, basically, you just cut off the da from the end of the verb, and then you have the verb stem. When you cut off the da, what you're left with is called the verb stem. Then we can just add different conjugations to the end of the verb stem. There are many different verb tenses in Korean. So let's talk about one of those today. 
Okay, so the verb tense I want to show you guys today is how to say, I want to do something. I want to eat. And the way we do that is we take the verb stem of a verb, which we get by taking off the da, and then we just add go shippoyo to it. Okay, so if we took our original sentence, which is chonin sagwater mokta, we cut off the da and add go shippoyo to our sentence, suddenly we have chonin sagwater moko shippoyo, which now means I want to eat apples. But if you look at it in the Korean word order, it's I, apples, eat, want. <laughs> so cho, me, nun, our subject marker, sagwa, apples, du, our object marker, mok, which is our verb stem from mokta, and go shippoyo, which means want to do something. Okay, so let's try conjugating other verbs into this go shippoyo form. That means I want to do it. So, mokta becomes, you cut off the da, and it becomes mokko shippoyo. What about mashida, which means to drink? Cut off the da, add go shippoyo, and you have mashigo shippoyo, which means I want to drink, or just want to drink because we don't have a subject. What about hada? That means to do something. Take off the da, and add go shippoyo, ha go shippoyo. I want to do it. I want to do it. Maybe you've heard this one before in a song. It's kind of funny because you can add hago shippoyo um, onto other words to make a lot of other verbs. So the interesting thing about hada is it's a part of many verbs. So like, for example, makeup. So you want to say, I want to do my makeup. You could say makeup hago shippoyo. <laughs> makeup hada. <laughs> There's a lot of other verbs that end with hada. So it goes from hada to hago shippoyo. Okay, and the last one we have here is mar hada, which means to speak or to say something. Cut off the da, and we're left with the verb stem mar ha. And then we just add go shippoyo to the end of it. So if you want to say I want to speak, it goes from mar hada to mar ha go shippoyo. All right, so you guys not only learned the basic sentence structure, you learned about the subject markers, un, un, un. you learned about the object markers, er and re, and you learned how to find the verb stem of a verb, cut off the da, and add a conjugation to the end. And the one we learned today is saying, I want to do something, mo go shippoyo. All right. So our practice sentence is chonin sagwater moko shippoyo. So maybe at the start of the class you would have had no idea what that means, but now you're like, oh yeah, I understand that. <laughs> okay. So if anyone has any questions, please leave a comment below and let me know what type of video you'd like me to make next. Anyaigaseo.